That's a mistake because the presidents want to meet the, uh, the visitors want to meet the president. So let's get organized on this. Let's get an expediter to take care of those first impressions, and let's make sure the president of the club is doing all the things that she should be doing for first impressions. Let me give you an example. Most presidents will ring a bell next year. Now we could get into a discussion later over a beer about the merits of ringing the bell or not ringing the bell. But how many of you are planning to ring a bell next year? Quite a few. Here's the thing, when you ring the bell, at least for the first few weeks, it's an unfamiliar experience and you'll ring it tentatively and then you'll, I've seen people swing and miss. <laughs> But here's the most common thing you see. You see people ring the bell, and the, and, the, and the expression on their face is, oh shit, I've got to start the meeting now. <laughs> That's the expression. Watch. Is that a good expression for the president of the club? <laughs> so what happens when the president of the club actually programs into the president's talking points, smile when you hit the bell? Right? And now I'm smiling because when you hear the bell, what does everybody do? They look up and they see somebody on the, on the platform. And you want them to see somebody who's pleasant, smiling, confident, and in control. Am I right? Yep. Okay. And that's the first 15 seconds. I teach presentation skills, and one of my specialties is called first impressions. The first 15 seconds of an interaction, a lot of decisions are getting made. When you meet somebody for the first time, when a visitor comes to the Rotary Club, and when you ring the bell and they look up on, on stage or to the platform or wherever to see who's in charge of the meeting. And this is your chance to really set a good tone, be a role model for future presidents, be a role model for everybody that comes on stage during the meeting. So that's one example uh, with the bell. Second one is the expediter, which we've already talked about. And the third one is this idea of actually meeting the visitors that come in. Most presidents don't take time to meet the visitors. They're too busy doing other things, presidential things. But, you know, they want to meet the president. And the, the interesting thing is the visitors don't even know they want to meet the president until after the president did, shows that they want to meet the visitors. And then they're like, oh my gosh, the president of the Rotary Club just came over and said hi to me. They didn't even know it was a thing. You have to teach them that it's a thing. And I don't care if you have six members in your club or 60, it's a thing to meet the president of anything, especially if you're presidential. So let's get it going. I also think that this idea of helping people feel good is really important. I think one of the things in all of your job descriptions next year is to be what I call cheerleader in chief. And it's not in any of your policies and procedures, it's not in your bylaws or anything like this, but you've gotta be the cheerleader for the club You've got to be what Reggie Jackson, the famous New York Yankee, used to say. He said it was the straw that stirred the drink. And that's who you have to be as president. It's not in any of your job descriptions. But because the spotlight's on you, people are watching you. Now, philosophically speaking, look at a big picture, you are not going to change the culture of your club one year in a row. You've got to get two or three presidents to get this going which is why we encourage at some pets for the PNs to come. Because we need a bunch of presidents to do this in a row. Then the club culture changes. And then you've got a chance of growing up into a vibrant, self-sustaining club. It's pretty cool. So this idea that we're talking about, about cheerleading and helping people feel good about themselves, is based in the concept of self-esteem, which is the biggest misnomer ever that ever happened. Because self-esteem actually can come from other people. Please raise your hand if you know this. Of course it's true. Self-esteem, the inference is that you could only get self-esteem from yourself, but you didn't even get it from yourself the first time around. When does a, a human being get most of their self-esteem? When is it bottled up inside you and, and the cap's put on? By what age? How many of you are parents? At what age does the kid have most of the self-esteem the kid's ever going to get? Age five is correct. Excellent. And that's why it's so important to be a good parent. The parent's the cheerleader in chief in the home, making the child feel good about himself, herself. There's a thing on the screen out here at the bank that says if we tell little girls that they're good with money, they grow up to believe it. And that's how it works. That's the cheerleader in chief. And so when you have the ability to be that person, 
here's the catch, everybody. You may not have been that person for your club up until today. Because maybe when your club gets together, you don't compliment everybody in the club about their style and their fashion sense and their numeracy and their literacy and how organized they are. You just barely get there in time to hear the bell ring. And now you got to get there early and you got to do it in phone calls and you got to text people when you're busy doing other things during the week. You are amazing. We love you in our club. And if I were you, I'd set that short key, shortcut key up for that. So I just do one key and it, it goes out, right? Do not send it out in bulk mail. <laughs> so this idea of somehow helping others, people understand that they're great and they're great without you, you know, they're just great by themselves is really, really important. And so this is the idea of helping them feel good about themselves through self-esteem. Now, one trick for this is, again, a, a shift that you have to make. And I, I hate to put all this on you, but your club isn't here today for training. Your club will never hear this keynote. You're the one getting the training, so you're the one that's go back and put these ideas into play. So here's the technique. <clears throat> Write this down, it's really important. When you show interest in others, Others will show interest in you. When you show interest in others, others will show interest in you. Some people call this the law of reciprocity, right? It works like this on airplanes. Someone sits next to me in an airplane, and uh, I'll start asking him or her questions. Now, if they don't want to chat with me, I'm, I'm good with that. But I always do this. It's good practice. And I'll ask questions. Are you, are you leaving? Are you, are you coming or are you going? My first question, you know. Are you going to work or going home? I'm going to work. Oh, where do you work? Oh, it, it, how long will you be there? One question leads into the other. Before you know it, you have, there's a little conversation going. Or is it a conversation? Nope. It's me asking questions. 